immortality can be found in the Horseshoes Gallery of Champions, a tribute to the 34 players who have achieved poker's greatest honor, World Series champion. This year, the play has tested some former champs. Now, only three men remain who knows just what it takes to be the last man standing. There's a lot of pressure in the main event, and it really is a grind. It's going to take a lot of stamina. You're talking fear, greed, anger, elation. And if you don't control it, you're going to be a loser. The only time that you're happy is when you can win. The worst day of the year is the day you get knocked out of this tournament. 80 minefields separate these three from another snapshot on the wall. Day five of the main event coming up next. Welcome to Las Vegas in the Horseshoe Casino, home to the World Series of Poker, presented by Miller High Life, where fans line up early and stay late to witness the biggest poker game on the planet. I'm Lon McCarran, alongside Norman Chad. You know, every big hotel in this town loves to have an A-list celebrity atop their marquee. Well, we are lucky enough to have three big-name former world champions still in the field. Chris Ferguson, Dan Harrington, and the biggest name of all, Doyle Brunson. Let me tell you how the World Series has changed, Lon. When Doyle Brunson won this event in 1976 and 77, he beat a field of 32 and a field of 54. This year, he's already bested nearly 2,500 players, and he's still not even close to winning this title yet. And there's the man they call Texas Dolly. Doyle Brunson looking for a record-breaking 10th World Series gold bracelet playing in the outer tables right now as we come over to our feature table. And interestingly, at our feature table, we have the other two former champions, Chris Ferguson, who won four years ago, and Dan Harrington, who won in 1995. Gee, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know your name. Eddie. Eddie? Hi, Eddie. I'm Dan. I know everyone else at the table. They've check-raised me a number of times. Dan Harrington talking to Eddie Sharp of Germany as we begin action here. And Dan Harrington, the first to look at his whole cards on the Miller High Life Pocket Cam, a suited 10-8. Harrington bets 20,000. In our previous session on day four, he looked very haggard and tired most of the day. He wasn't getting cards. Maybe a night's sleep will refresh him. Action over to David Angel. Action. He won a World Series bracelet in 1983, and he's in the big blind with pocket I'll fives. Raise. And he is going to raise. Blinds right now at 3,000 and 6,000 and a 1,000 chip hand. 75,000. And the raise is 75,000 back to Dan Harrington. And Dan always likes to look at the opponent before acting. I raise. Uh, the, ra the, the bet is what, how much? You now owe 55,000. 55? Uh, 50, 55, right. I'm going to raise it. I know Dan can do the math. I'm all in. <laughs> That's the easy way to do it. And he's going all in on a stone cold bluff. And he's playing off his reputation. He's solid and tight. So when he raises, one, he usually has the goods. Two, the other player usually runs. Harrington's trying to bluff out a player who knows he plays tight. Well, I don't have aces, Dan, so. And Angel's showing the respect. They're telling him he doesn't have aces, so anything less he might get rid of. Take it. Angel folds to the bluff. Entitled to pick him up once in a while. Dan entitled to pick up that pot, outfoxing the whole table. He's now over 500,000 in chips. The former champion knows better than most. There's more than one way to get to the final table, and no limit, Texas Hold'em. Anyone walking around this room right now can feel the tension in the air as the chip stacks shrink and the nerve spray. There is tournament chip leader young John Murphy holding a pair of tens against one of Europe's top players, Marcel Luce. He's number three in chips right now, holding an ace high. Here comes the river card, and now Murphy is assured in the best hand as the check mark indicates. Marcel's trying to push around John Murphy, though. He bet 100,000 on the turn. Murphy called, and now he's putting out a 200,000 chip bet with nothing, trying to push John Murphy out of this hand on a bluff. Nobody yet has been successful in pushing around this 21-year-old as evidenced by his big chip stack. And a good call, as Marcel indicates. Murphy will take down the pot with the tens. And a showdown between two of the top three chip leaders. John Murphy does not crumble under the pressure of the powerful veteran Marcel Luce. Youth continues to be served here, and I don't think Marcel likes the price he just paid. Now to Josh Arie, number two in chips. Why do I do this to myself? 
And he is up against this man, Donnie Ariel, who has made it known he is all in with a king six. And REA calls it. And the reason he did that to himself that time, it only call. cost him 62,000 to call the all in. And Josh has a huge chip stack so he can afford it. And a queen nine for Josh REA as we go to the flop. And he's behind as we go to the flop, but Josh catches a queen and now pushes Ariel to the edge of extinction. It's not a bad Where? <laughs> He's very aware is Donnie Ariel. And here comes the turn card, ace of spades, no help. And now Ariel would need a king and a king only to stay alive. But it's a five Donnie of hearts, Ariel. not going to do it. Ariel wins the hand, and Donnie Ariel will take the walk that about 2,500 others have taken before him at this year's main event. Going back over to our featured table. First to act will be David Angel, who was just bluffed out of some chips by Dan Harrington. He's looking at an ace four suited. He comes out with 25,000. Eddie Sharp will fold. Action now to Chris Ferguson, the 2000 world champion. King, queen unsuited. Ferguson always very studied and methodical before he makes his decisions. And he looks like he's reaching, and he is indeed. And it looks like Jesus and Angel will be going to the flop. And <laughs> excuse me, just short of heavenly for both. And we've got a hard draw for Angel and a straight draw for Chris Ferguson. Yeah, Chris checks, and Angel in the better position here, actually about a four to one favorite with ace high and the flush draw, and he will bet 50,000. Jesus on a draw now, too, ponders exactly what his opponent may have. Well, it looks like he hasn't gotten a really good read on Angel this time because he is going to raise back, and he is behind in the hand. Call. Cool. 140,000 for oh, Ferguson, and that in. puts Angel all in, and he makes the call. And now Chris Ferguson sees the trouble he's in. This is certainly not Chris's best call ever. He's got all these redraws. David Boy, Angel's all in shape. He's for a heart. And it's chips he'd like to get back right now as we go to the turn. And the turn card is a five of clubs, no help to either. One card to come. Seven out or the board. He's got seven outs, a king, queen, or 10, but it can't be a heart. And the river card is an ace of clubs. David Angel wins the hand, and Jesus Ferguson is not off to the start that he envisioned. The World Series of Poker is brought to you by Milwaukee's Best Life. Milwaukee's Best Life. We have seen Jesus and Angel already today, but when you talk about deity in the poker universe, Doyle Brunson is about as lofty as one gets, and he has put all his chips at risk right now. And Doyle with so much at stake here, going for a record 10th World Series bracelet, and this would be his third main event title, which would time for the most ever with Johnny Moss and Stu Unger. Doyle's all in for 139,000. So Ed Foster oh, is called Doyle Brunson with a pair of fives, Foster a pair of eights. Foster, as you may recall, knocked Mike Matisau out of the main event, now trying to do the same to Doyle. Doyle put his 139,000 chips at risk. The turn card is another five for Brunson. And it sounds like Doyle's got a home field advantage, but he's not out of the woods yet. Foster can still knock him out by making a straight with a six or an eight on the river. And the river card is a queen. Doyle rounds out his hand nicely and makes the full house. After some off years here, Doyle Brunson is once again a force in this main event. Fun to watch. It's been a great run for Brunson. He had gastric bypass surgery several months ago. He's been tired during this long haul of the tournament, and his legs have been hurting him, but boy, he's really held up. Back now to the featured table of our main event. Chris Ferguson is undoubtedly one of the most well-known poker players in the world, but here's something you may not know about this man. We know Chris Jesus Ferguson is a great poker player. We know he can chop produce in half with a single playing card. But can you guess what club he was president of at UCLA? The math club, the archery club, or the swing dancing club? The answer is... In poker, you're really trying to basically be expressionless the entire time. It's because you don't want to allow your, your opponents to read you. But 
it's completely the opposite of dance. You want to be as expressive as possible. So I think it just makes a great contrast. I'm a lot like Chris. He's a poker player and a swing dancer. I play checkers and I play twister. <laughs> I think they could use a disco ball here at the Horseshoe. <laughs> William Erickson now looking at ace three suited. Reese. Did you see that ace of spades, Lon? Ace of spades is the prettiest card in the deck. I'll tell you why when we go to commercial. He's going to raise the big blind. Raise it. 15,000, Erickson from New York. First World Series of Poker. He's already grabbed the nickname the Poker Guru. At your first World Series? Yeah. That's a bit presumptuous. Over to Danson, Chris Ferguson. 10-7 off suit. And he has not thrown him away yet. <laughs> no, if he's going to dance with these cards, that's presumptuous. A uh, very modest hand for Chris. Chris is not in his first World Series of Poker, and he's going to call it. Unusual call there. The flop with Erickson and Ferguson, eight, jack, seven. And a good flop for Chris Ferguson. He makes a pair of sevens and a straight draw. Erickson got no part of that flop. Chris checks his sevens over to Erickson now, who goes in with 30,000 now. And now Chris Ferguson, behind his shades as usual, will take a look at his opponent and think about the pot odds, think about his hand vis-a-vis -vis his opponent, and make a decision. And his decision is to go all in. Can we count that down? And when Chris Ferguson goes all in here, it is as much in assessing the strength or weakness of his opponent's hand as it is in his hand. And right now, besides having the sevens, he doesn't sense Six, much seven, of a hand four. for William Erickson. Ferguson raised all in with 68,000. That would be a good chunk of Erickson's stack. Should've raised high before the flop, huh? Yeah, well, I shouldn't have married a woman I met at a Jiffy Loop, but what are you gonna do? <sighs> He's agonizing over this line, but he got no piece of the flop. His ace three is so susceptible to so many other hands right now, I really can't see him making the call in this position. He's hurting. He'll be hurting if he calls. Nice hand, Chris. Great bet. He kicks it in, and rightly so. Chris Ferguson, two steps around. William Erickson takes the pot. About 70 players still active here in the main event. On the outer tables, there's Glenn Hughes. You're in bad shape. You're in bad shape. And Hughes is in bad shape. He's all in with an ace jack against Jason Sagel's pair of kings. And Hughes, a two to one underdog. Give me an ace, dealer. I need an ace, baby. <laughs> an ace might help him, Norm. <laughs> Give me an ace today. He got hey, it! Yeah! Uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Uh, Glenn Hughes now falls into the lead over Jason Sagel, who's hurting now. And Hughes can survive if he can avoid a king on the turn or river. No king on the turn. And the river card. Hughes wins it. Yes! Glenn Hughes comes from behind at a critical moment. Yes! And doubles up against Jason Sagel. By the time I get lucky, lost with aces twice. Series of poker presented by Miller Highlight. Main event. The unique look that is Greg Raymer sitting at the outer tables now. We watched his masterful use of as many chips at our featured table in a previous round. Raymer was dealt the pair of aces here and has moved all in against Marcel Lusk. And of course, we remember Raymer from his matchups against Mike Matisau. He got the better of that, and he's got the better of this hand right now. Plus, his glasses match the shirt. Very tasteful. Cool. 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 Marcel will call. Raymer went in with 333,000 chips. He's in a dominant position over Marcel Lusk in this hand. So Greg Raymer and Marcel Lusk to the flop. It comes out, two queens and a seven. No help for Lusk. All but over for Marcel. He need running kings or a jack-10 to make a straight to win this hand. And the turn card. It's a seven of spades, and that is going to win the hand for Greg Raymer, doubling up on Marcel Luce. Boy, a tough hit for Marcel. And an important win for Greg Raymer with those chips. He's now among the top 10 in chip leaders. Eventually, he'll have to move that super big gulp. 
There is Murph Dog, our chip leader, John Murphy, a student at Santa Barbara City College. He is losing a hand right now to Kevin Chappell. Does he have me covered? Yeah. <laughs> I think Murphy's got the room covered. It's a nine. But Murphy loses that hand. I see. I got chips this way. Frankly, a 21-year-old should never have this much money in front. Took off a finger. This kid is not phased by anything. My name is John Murphy. I'm from Danville, California, and I'm 21 years old. I've always wanted to come and kind of watch the event. I mean, I wasn't even planning on playing. I was like, I'll give a satellite a shot. I ended up playing and making it this far. Good job. Good job. I didn't know what to expect on the first day of the World Series, but I was pretty confident after about an hour of playing. Once you're sitting down at the table, age doesn't really matter. Not giving up those thousands? To me, I don't really put too much emphasis on the fact that I'm 21. He don't look 21, he looks about 17. I'm busted, I'm busted. <laughs> ID check, coming up. A lot of people brought to my attention. 1982. He's good. Throughout the tournament, there's always been someone trying to stand up to me. Who's the bully? And if someone's gonna get in my way, then we're gonna go to war. I'll, I'll teach him a lesson. You don't have to be a seasoned professional to take down the championship. Anyone can win it. Well, ignorance is bliss, and right now John Murphy might be better off not thinking too much and continuing to play his role. And he has played a big role so far in this main event. Back to our featured table where the blinds have increased to 4,000 and 8,000. Andy still at 1,000. Matthias Anderson, one of the young guns here in this tournament, an excitable young player, 24 years old, squeezing a couple of aces. And he'll bet 16,000. Next in line. Former world champion Dan Harrington will fold. Over to James Hepner, 44 years old from Las Vegas, looking at Queen Seven suited in space. And he's in the big blind, so he can get in for half price to see the flop, and he will. So it'll be Anderson and Hepner to the flop. Anderson with the two aces. And that's how you bust aces. Hepner flops a spade flush. That's bingo I for him. Check. He's going to slow play him. And he got lucky here because he might not have played this hand unless he was in the big blind. And Anderson comes out with 15,000. He's got a spade draw. Yes, he does. He can get a better spade flush if another spade hits. And Hefner comes back over the top with 50,000 chips. And Matias goes all in immediately. I'm a little surprised Hefner decided to, to raise right there. I thought he'd slow play, but one way or another, he's probably going to end up putting all his chips into this pot. So the decision to this man, James Hefner, with the all-in for Matias Anderson. And Matias actually putting Hefner all in. If he calls this, he will be at risk in this tournament. All right, let's go. He wants to play. And I call. So James Hefner will be all-in against Matias Anderson. Hefner with the lead right now with a flush. And Anderson with a raggedy premature celebration. Hold he must on. not have noticed that Hefner flopped the flush. Eight. No, I meant spade. Now he realizes what he's up against. Spade. He wants a spade. Okay. I want a spade. Please. That would give him the nut flush and give him the lead over Hefner. And this is typical Matthias Anderson pacing the floor. Waiting for the turn, now it's a yeah! spade! Yeah! 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 That is Matias' signature flush celebration, but he still could lose the hand. Hefner can make a straight flush with a nine of spades. No spade. No spade. It's a club! Matias Anderson wins the hand after James Hefner flopped a flush, but Anderson comes back with a better flush. Hepner first was very lucky, then very unlucky to get knocked out. <sighs> and a huge boost to the chip stack of Matthias Anderson. I, I put the hand in when it turned over his cards. I didn't realize they had the flash. <laughs> <coughs> I should not scream like this. I have a cold. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just Whoa. Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. Our 
Toyota Player of the Year leaderboard is led by Daniel Negreanu, but two men are still alive in the main event that could overtake it should they win it all. One of them right there, Blair Rodman, who's playing at the outer tables. And the other one is none other than Chris Ferguson here at our featured table. If the Player of the Year award had existed before this year, Lon, Chris Ferguson would have won it in 2000 and 2003. Impressive indeed, but he'll fold here. Matthias Anderson to act. He seems to have calmed down from the previous hand, and he's looking at ace-queen suited. It's the lull before the storm. Matthias bets 20,000 chips. Dan Harrington and Steve Lott will fold over to William Erickson, a.k.a. the poker guru. Two eights. I'm all in. Go! Oof. Hmm. How much is it? I want it counted. It's always polite to take your hat off when there's a count. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think 46. 146. 146,000 chips now. I need the call. Uh -huh. Be careful what you wish for. Erickson says he wants uh -huh. a call to double up, but sometimes you get hurt. I have a hand here. Matthias has chips approaching 800,000. You know, I, I think I like them better with the hat on, actually. <laughs> The first few days of this tournament are about surviving, Norm, but right now Matias has to make a decision to go or not because he has to be strong going forward. Early on it's surviving, now it's accumulating. So that's what Matias is considering in his head. He knows it's probably a coin flip situation. He's got to decide, do I want to take a chance right now to accumulate another 146,000 chips to put me in a much better position in this tournament? You don't want me to call. <laughs> so Matias is weighing the risk against the reward. <sighs> And people who take chances in tournaments, they're the ones who end up winning them. Matias may be just 24, but he's got the experience to know how big a moment this is. I actually believe you had me. Good grace. And he'll fold it. I haven't bluffed the whole time. I think you had the sevens or something. <laughs> How's he know that? He's darn close. Well, I had a good hand. And Matias decides the risk is not worth it at this point of the tournament. But things at this main event should get more and more interesting as we move through. More and more chips being traded between the players, the tension getting higher. How much is first prize in this thing? Five million dollars. I'll be honest with you, that's a lot of money. It is indeed. Cynthia Kumar, a software engineer from Los Gatos, California. A real race. Ace Queen, he's going all in. About 160,000, he'd love to double up right here. Not worth it for Dan Harrington. William Erickson folds as well over to David Angel. And he too with an ace queen unsuited. How much is that? Oh, I heard that much? Ah. 163. It's where this guy played a detective on TV once. <laughs> Kumar had 163,000 chips. Come on in. And David Angel's going to call it. Oh, oh. Well, they have identical hands, and we're staring at the probability of a split pot unless somebody makes a flush. Mainly diamonds. Yep, Angel wants the diamonds. Diamonds. They both have a club. Here comes the flop. It's two spades. Advantage to Kumar. Red card. Angel, no chance for a flush now. Kumar still could do it with running spades. Turn card, another spade. Well, there's the first spade for Kumar. Please. And he's now one spade away from turning a split pot into a nightmare for Angel. Any red card. Oh, a spade. Oh. Yes. 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 The long shot comes through for Kumar. Can you imagine Matias' reaction if oh. he had made that flush? <laughs> Raise the roof. Oh. Huh. Oh. Kumar doubles yes. up on David Angel. It's a cruel game, Lon, and don't you ever forget it. Oh. Oh, it's a different game. And Kumar has some ammunition now to work with. In the outer tables, the legend is still at work and garnering much of the attention and adulation in the room. <laughs> That's what I've usually got. I'm all in. Let's see what Doyle we Brunson continues to amaze everyone around him with his skill of the game as he rakes in another pot here in the main event, something he's been doing for decades.
And when a poker player crosses 50, that's usually when he starts going downhill. I think I'm a dinosaur. I'm 70 years old, and I think I'm playing about as good as I ever was. 15 years ago, there was 100 people in the tournament. You know, they were all top quality players, whereas uh, oh, 70, 75 percent of the field here is relatively weak. Come on. <laughs> you taught him that. You wrote the book. It's always been funny that I've always done better against better players for some reason, as, a, as opposed to weaker players. I hope to uh, get the 10th bracelet because, uh, you know, getting older and everything, but I plan on doing it before I go out to pasture. Back of the outer tables, Doyle is under 100,000 chips and looking for more. Good race. And with an ace king, he's going to go all in for his 69,000. Waiting for action from Bradley Berman. Doyle regularly plays in one of the biggest cash games in the country with Bradley's father, Lyle Berman. And Berman is going to call the all in. And Doyle runs in a dominant position to try to stay alive here in the tournament, a three to one favorite as we go to the flop. Doyle knows it full well, too, with that smile. Berman from Minneapolis, Minnesota, looks at the flop of 939, no help. That improves Doyle's position. And a turn card. Ten of hearts now, Berman with a straight draw. Yeah, you're right, and now a jack or a queen for Berman would knock Doyle Brunson out of the main event. River card wins it for Doyle. Doyle. Good hand, Doyle. Take it down, Doyle. Doyle Brunson's still a factor in this main event. Back at the horseshoe on our featured table. David Angel still trying to regroup after Sindil Kumar took a big chunk of his stack a few moments ago. Detective on a 70s show, I think. I think? <laughs> Ace 10 suited, he raises the 25,000, does Angel. Around the rest of the table, Ferguson folds, Kumar gets out of the way. Over to Matias Anderson. Matias is in the small blind. And he has slowly, albeit not quietly, become a very big force in this main event. A lot of chips. Two sixes he's looking at. Matias has struggled with a number of tough decisions so far at this featured table. And with his sixes, it looks like he will call the bet. To Dan Harrington. Two nines. Those are upside down sixes, and they're better than sixes. <laughs> and Dan knows how to play the sixes or the nines. He's in the big blind, and he will come in for a discount to make a three-way flop. And come to Papa, Harrington flops a full house. And, and Harrington looks like he's just waiting for a traffic light to change. Matthias Anderson, first to act, 20,000 chips. How will Action Dan work it? He'll call. He'll slow play it, shooting a glance at Matthias and hoping to get action. David Angel does not comply, he folds. Two players. So Matthias Anderson needs a whole deck of sixes here. And the turn card is a king. And Harrington gets the check mark. He has the winning hand if he doesn't fold. Meanwhile, Matthias is drawing dead, but he is going to bet. And he might think he has the best hand right now, Lon. The, the flop came 9-2-2. Usually people have high cards in their hand when they're playing. So he might think the pocket sixes are the, the best pair. 30,000 from Anderson, another call from Dan Harrington. And a quick glance, another slow play from Harrington. He tries to reel him in. Three of clubs. Anderson now, the first to act. He's going to bet again, Lon. And for Dan Harrington, the only thing he can really worry about maybe is pocket kings, which is very unlikely for Matthias Anderson. So Dan Harrington weighing the odds, figuring how hard now he wants to push. 150,000 chips. And Matthias looks like he's figured out that the jig is up that his hand's not going to be good enough with that bet from Dan Harrington. And Matthias Anderson will give it up. 
very nice. Thank you. Well, Harrington took over 100,000 chips from Matias, but Anderson made the right call in the end and saved himself a lot more hurt. And for Dan Harrington, this former champ and a finalist at last year's main event, just getting stronger. And that is the big chip stack of a very strong player, Josh Rea. His future in this tournament, though, was put in jeopardy just a few days ago. Day two is something I never, ever want to experience again. I woke up in the morning knowing that I'm in the top 40 out of 1,200 people in chips. And I call my wife just to share my excitement with her. And she was in the hospital. And when she told me, I, I freaked. Oh, man, oh, man. I mean, I, I literally was ready to go home. She said, I have a job to do and get in there and play and not worry about her. She just expressed the fact to me that I have a chance here and this, this, this could be the one. And she said all that before I got the phone call of her saying, I'm okay. It wasn't as bad as we both thought. It was some sort of infection. I mean, I... I can't say enough about her, and you know I owe it to her to come out here and make her proud. If I won five million dollars, I'd just give the money to my wife, say do whatever, and I mean she deserves it more than I do. Thankfully, Josh's wife is okay, and he continues to be a force here, and specifically at this table, he's bet enough on this hand with his king jack to put Jeffrey Calkins all in with his two eights. Meanwhile, Chuck Pacheco probably liked his cards, but right. the bet was too rich for his blood, and oh, he pulled. And we have a coin flip situation with Calkins all in being the slight favorite as we go to the flop. And his fifth World Series, Josh, no stranger to this situation. He's had seven World Series go. caches, three World Series final tables. The flop comes 2-5-9, no help for Aria. And that's good news for Calkins and his bid to stay alive. He's now stronger as we go to the turn. And the turn card, five of hearts again. Calkins, a better favorite now. And now only a king or a jack on the river would eliminate Calkins. And the river card, oh, the there's the king. Oh, oh that hurts. Aria comes from behind to win the hand, and Calkins is gone. I don't think players with two picks generally do well. Especially on the river. Yeah, well, right. Was there ever a doubt? <laughs> Woo -hoo! Is there ever a doubt? Elsewhere in the outer tables, that is Marcel Luce, who has raised all in with an ace queen unsuited against the ace king unsuited of D. Archer. Marcel behind here has been treading in tough waters all day. And the flop comes out 7 10. King Marcel with a straight draw. King, 10, Where's the jack? Where's the jack? I got four eyes now. I draw here three. For I improved. Yeah. Where's the jack? There it is! Oh, Jack! Jack! Oh! I say where's the Jack! Oh, the nine of hearts! Give him the nine of hearts! Give it! All right, I want going. you to give the nine of hearts! The nine of hearts give Marcel a straight flush. D. Archer's looking for any heart that's not a nine. That will knock loose out of the tournament. It's a club Marcel survives! Ah! <laughs> the Boger God! Long live the Boger God! <laughs> give me the money, damn it! <laughs> Brought to you by Milwaukee's Best Light. Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. And Harris Entertainment. And Levitra. Ask your doctor about it today. Levitra. When it counts. The familiar snake eyes of Greg Raymer on the outer tables holding a pair of jacks. He's made a bet that could put Tobias Harrison all in. Oh. Paul. All in. And Ball that's exactly what Pearson does with his two tens and behind in the hand. Pearson in trouble right now, four to one underdog. And smart to be getting his jacket because he's on his way out. Ready for the flop and now Pearson with a set of tens. Pearson can sit back down now. Opa with an eight of spades on the turn, a new set of problems for Pearson. He's still ahead in the hand, but Raymer can knock him out with a jack or a seven or a spade on the river. Spades. Yeah! Oh my. Well, Greg Raymer gets the winning flush Raymer on the river. Uh, Good luck, Tobias Pearson takes 55th place, $35,000. What a win for Raymer. And a tough way for Tobias to go out. 
Yeah, I'm going to prize winnings. You're probably going to go now start dressing better like I do. Well, you got to gamble if you're going to win this main event. And as we learned in this edition of The Nuts, just about all the players in this room will gamble on most anything. It's called a prop bet. Bet me on how many chips I had in front of me. I won 1,000. But Howard Lederer has faced much tougher stakes. The longtime vegetarian was once challenged to eat a cheeseburger. Howard took the bet, took the burger, and took home 10 grand. You know, the one thing that disappointed the guy was that I didn't get sick. Phil Hellmuth and Huck Seed wagered 10 cheese once to see if Huck could float in the ocean for 24 hours. But Huck threw in the towel before he even got wet. He paid that one. John Hennigan was offered 30000 to live for 30 days in Des Moines, Iowa. He only had to stay for two weeks. The guy knew he was going to lose the bet if we kept it on, so he wound up paying all my expenses and gave me like 5000 or something, which I was pretty happy about because Des Moines is pretty boring. Finally, there's Brian Zimbic, winner of perhaps the mother of all prop bets. The wager was a hundred grand, and it wasn't the only full figure involved. We get one peek here, okay? Any kids? Okay, that's it. Oh, baby cakes! Okay. One of our girlfriends going out with all these guys are taking out the dinners and whatever, and I said, if I had like her, I'd get just as much attention. So he bet me uh, 100000 put him in, and I said, okay, let's do it. It's like I get so many chicks like this, it's unbelievable. Norm, 100 grand is not enough. <laughs> on the outer tables, one of the two players with a chance to overtake Daniel Negreanu on the Toyota Player of the Year leaderboard has just been ousted. Blair Rockman busted out, and now only one man can do the play on that leaderboard. And he is at our feature channel right now. It is Chris Jesus Ferguson. And Chris Ferguson has had a frustrating day, unable to get going on any level, and his chips are starting to dwindle. New player at the featured table is Matt Dean, a 24-year-old from Woodlands, Texas. Another kid with a dream. Jack-10 offsuit, he'll fold it. And the rest of this featured table folds over to Ferguson. Jesus looks at ace-queen unsuited. There it is, Lon. The ace of spades, a thing of beauty. If you ever see the entire card, one day you'll understand what I'm talking about. Oh. I've never been dealt the ace of spades. <laughs> And that's why I do this for a living. He'll bet 30000 Yeah, that ace of spades induced the bet from Jesus. Anderson folds. So does Dan Harrington. Over to William Erickson. Couple of fives. And a ponder. I'm all in. All in. A decent spot to go all in for Erickson. He's got a pocket pair. A little more than 100000 in chips left. Action over to Ferguson now. How much more is it? Oh, it's well. Sorry. It's all right. 112,000 to Chris. That would take a lot of his stack. Yeah, it's most of his remaining chips, and, and he's got to be thinking, at best, it might be a coin flip situation. But he's coming on in, and he's going to put Erickson all in. So Ferguson flips his ace queen, the two fives of Erickson, with a slight advantage. I had to, I had to take a shot in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Erickson went all in earlier in the day with two eights. Now with the two fives. Here's the flop and two kings and a deuce. No help to Ferguson. Erickson's position improves, and Ferguson's been staring at the, the wrong end of these heads-up duels today. The three is no help for Chris. And now Ferguson can knock out Erickson on the river only with an ace or a queen. The river card. It's a jack of spades. And William Erickson doubles up and cripples Chris Jesus Ferguson in the process. And this former champ knows it's moving day. It's a day to accumulate chips, and Chris Ferguson just not getting that done right now. Whew. Eight sweat and coin flips. And that coin flip just cost oh, Chris Ferguson about two-thirds of his chip stack. Welcome back to the Horseshoe. The main event of the main event today has been two-time world champion Doyle Brunson. Doyle has moved all in with his pair of 10 right now on the outer table. 1670, 188. Risking almost 200,000 chips. Action to Bradley Berman who calls the all-in with his ace seven. The second time he's called a Brunson all-in today. Doyle with the advantage now with a pair of 10s. 
Bad news for one of us. And here comes the flop. Oh, and Berman gets another ace. And that's very bad news for Doyle. His 2004 World Series now on life support. Berman in a commanding lead, a chance to knock out a legend of poker. Turn card, three of spades. So for Doyle Brunson now seeking a record 10th bracelet and a record tying third main event title, he will need a 10 now on the river to stay alive or he is gone. River card is a jack. Okay. There will be no 10th bracelet for Doyle Brunson. get this type of ovation. Well, this year's World yeah, Series has seen remarkable moments with the success of women players and young players, but watching Doyle Brunson make a charge here in the main event, giving himself the best possible chance of every card dealt, perhaps still the biggest thrill of all. It's tough to see him go. For a long time, he has set the standard, both with his level of poker play and the quality of his character. We had three former champions in the room. One of them has just left. Another one is Chris Ferguson right now. He has a lot of work to do, or he may be following Doyle to the exit door. Blinds at 5,000 and 10,000 here at the featured table. Action over to Chris Ferguson. And his patented slow squeeze of a 10 queen unsuited. He likes the drama of the squeeze. Doesn't he, though? And still always studied and measured before he makes his move. Thirty thousand chips from Chris Ferguson to Matthias Anderson. He's taking Ferguson yes. <laughs> lessons there He's on the screen. Taking classes online. Ace Queen suited with hearts. Matthias, just like Ferguson, very meticulous in every move he makes. When he scratches his nose, I think it's a signal to someone in the crowd to bring him a popsicle. Matias will call the 30,000 chip bet from Ferguson. Dan Harrington, the other former champion, left in the field, folds. So it'll be Ferguson and Anderson to the flop, and it comes out jack 3-9. Ferguson picks up an open-ended straight draw. But he's still behind in the hand of Matias, his ace high. All in. Matias Anderson trying to put Chris Ferguson all in. Wow, Ferguson drops the shades to glare at Matias. We don't see that much from him. This is another tough spot for Chris Jesus Ferguson. You don't like to go all in on a draw. His chip stack is dwindling. You got to pick a spot where you want to try to double up. But I don't think this is the spot for him. He's got queen high right now and just a draw to a straight. Ugh. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Chris Ferguson is all in. Wow, he's in a tough position, Lon. He's going all in just on a draw, and right now he's a 3-2 to two dog to Matias Anderson. And Chris Ferguson reads the bad news, and his card's perhaps numbered now. And all day his reads have not been as sharp as usual, and these heads-up duels, he's usually been behind. Yes. Well, we just saw one world champion exit the room. Chris Ferguson may be following him. The turn card is no help. Chris Ferguson now in dire straights. He can stay alive if he pairs his 10, or if he makes a king or an eight for a straight. Otherwise, he is out of here. The river card, perhaps Ferguson's last. Oh, he wins the hand with a king. You should don't see that much emotion from Chris Ferguson. We do see it from Matthias Anderson, win or lose, and he's crushed. Oh, look at this. What is he, Arsenio? <laughs> So Jesus lives to fight another day, but he has a lot of work to do if he hopes to make it back to the final table. We certainly saw some memorable moments today, and now only two former champions remain as one legend falls. Next time, more battles between the new faces and the seasoned pros. We are down to just 50 players in the quest for $5 million. See you next year, guys.